Hey then everyone, Juan Romero here back with another review and this one is Spirit of the North which was released on the PS4 already, it's been ported to the Nintendo Switch and is being published by Merge Games and yes we get that sweet signature edition. Before I get into it, some of you may not care but this was made by only two gentlemen and that's something when reviewing a game like this I like to take into consideration because where merit deserves I love to support that talent. Now let's break this one down, see if it's worth your hard-earned cash and talk about that story. If you've played games such as Journey, Absu or Inside, you'll know that games can tell a story without using any words at all, leaving a lot to your own imagination through the game's music and visuals, which we'll get into in a minute. But this is more about that journey and how it makes you feel. I don't want to give too much away, but I will say that the game can make you think about things that we do to our own world, such as pollution that we create and what we can do to the wonderful landscapes that we have. From the moment the game loaded up, I was captivated by the wonderful scenery and controlling our little protagonist, a little fox, which stands out majestically against the snowy surroundings and the beautiful green lands of Iceland inspired by Nordic folklore. This is full of mystery and one which will have its claws in you till the end. As you start out, your fox becomes involved with the guardian of the northern lights, a female spirit fox. All you have to go on is the red mist in the sky and your companion, which you quickly begin to follow as you investigate the surroundings further to unravel the mysteries. In terms of gameplay, you control your fox. And there are a few things I want to get off my chest before talking about the positives. Controls are a little clumsy at times. It's not as tight as it could have been in a game which does have multiple platforming sections. Luckily, these platforming sections are not too tricky. And there are time sections which can be a little frustrating due to you falling off ledges due to those controls. Now, while the game makes it look as if you can explore to your heart's content, it is a rather linear experience and you will always end up going where the game intends you to go to get to that next chapter. That's not to say that's a bad thing, but I would have loved it if the game was more open world where you could literally go anywhere. Thirdly, is the lack of life within the game's environments. The environments are absolutely stunning but there's no wildlife at all. I think that would have added to the experience in my opinion. But let's move on to those positives. The game is an experience where you get to solve environmental puzzles in a mostly beautiful place. Most of the puzzles will involve releasing doors which are covered in what looks like pollutants of the most disgusting kind. The moment you take your fox through an oil sludge, it will make you think about the way we're destroying our world, its plants and wildlife. None of the puzzles here are challenging, but they are enjoyable and involve the source of your power, which is the spirit fox. As you solve a bunch of puzzles, the game follows a similar pattern in which you'll take in some scenery while looking for shamans and sliding down waterfalls, which is pretty cool, or should I say streams. You can't die here or anything like that, so the game is certainly one you can play with a younger audience and doesn't have any violence involved. Indeed, I went through the whole game with my five-year-old and it was actually a very valuable lesson and a lovely story to discuss with her afterwards. As you get further into the game, you will unlock different powers, such as being able to control the spirit fox so you can get to parts of a level you can't with your normal fox, for example, walking on water. Certain large stones within the levels will require you to release a blue energy from your fox, which you can only absorb by finding the blue glowing flowers dotted around the world. And usually once you release this energy into a stone, it will unlock a certain door and you then have to find more of these flowers to absorb that energy. You can use that energy so that you can dash or use a bolt of energy to destroy these nasty black plants. Again, powers which you will unlock later on in the game. For those of you that like to collect, then finding shaman staffs is important to release the spirits of the deceased shamans dotted around each chapter. And once you've completed the game, you can go back and find the shaman staffs and shaman's bodies, which you may have missed 
Now I enjoyed how this game progresses and the environmental puzzles become more grandeur often requiring you to use water to fill large parts of a level so you can get to the next bit. There are platforming parts but these are not really the main part of the game. It's more about as I say that journey and experience you have throughout and for me that's where the true beauty here lies. In terms of audio it is wonderful composed by Joseph Gifford and there is an issue though that it tends to loop quite a lot as you get further into the game. What is here though is beautiful but I wanted more of it and that may be greedy of me to say but it's only because it was so good. The atmosphere created is excellent with the sounds of the earth which sounds like it's moving or shuddering cracks in the rocks as you run over them and the fox itself with its little barks. It all makes for a very mesmerizing atmosphere and one that draws you in to those lush visuals. Let's talk about those visuals and performance then because that really is key to this game's success I believe. The visuals here are absolutely stunning in places, but unfortunately, Spirit of the North really chugs along at times when you're running fast throughout the levels, which you will notice. When running, the frames do skip. The game almost at times comes to a standstill. And I noticed this a lot more when passing chapter five. The first few chapters is not as noticeable. I also had multiple crashes where I lost quite a lot of progress as the game only saves when you get to a save point, which again was rather frustrating. There's popping, which is noticeable, glitches and things which you would think should not happen, like carrying a staff in your mouth straight through rocks or when your fox becomes completely stuck because you've gone through part of the scenery. Some of the issues are of course minor, again some even forgivable given the size of the studio making this and for the most part it's an incredible feat. However, the game has already been released elsewhere so I think it's right to expect that Switch owners should expect more overall from the product. Another issue is there are a couple of chapters which are rather dark and you know one which is almost pitch black. I couldn't play these in handheld and needed to play those in docked and increase the brightness. On the small screen these areas even with brightness turned up to the max you just couldn't see anything properly and you can really notice the downgrade when playing in handheld more it seems than in other games. When Spirit of the North is running smooth it's a sight to behold. Lush meadows, wonderful snowy mountains and water streams, waterfalls, all of the good stuff is here. And on one of the chapters later on in the game, it is honestly sublime in its visuals. And I just wonder whether it's been poorly optimized or if the Switch just cannot cope with the visual fidelity on display. While there are issues here, I still enjoyed the game, but it is something you need to be aware of when going in. I've not had the opportunity to play this, unfortunately, on the PS4, so I cannot attest to its performance elsewhere. When all is said and done, you're looking at around four hours to complete the game. And of course, if you find all the staffs and shamans, possibly a little longer. The game will cost you around £20 for UK buyers, $25 in the US and $20.99 for our European friends. There's also a physical edition and a signature edition, which will set you back $39.99 from Merge, which is rather more expensive, but you get a bunch of cool extras. So make sure you visit their website if you want to purchase that. Let's talk about the verdict then. I enjoyed the environmental puzzles, beautiful scenery and music all together form a very relaxing experience, which is sometimes exactly what is needed to chill after a hard day's work. There are some issues with the controls being rather clunky and performance issues, which drag it down somewhat on the Nintendo Switch. But if you can put up with these, then I'm hoping that Merge will work with the developers to release a patch, but that isn't set in stone. If you like games like Abzu or Journey, then this is another worthwhile journey to take. I think even with the issues, Spirit of the North is a 
commendable effort, a gorgeous game that has a worthwhile story to tell, which I found compelling and when the credits rolled, left me pondering and also smiling, which was worth the entry price. A solid seven out of 10. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this review and if you did, hit that thumbs up. If you didn't, there's also the thumbs down button. In the comment section down below, let us know if this is your type of game and whether you're gonna be picking that one up or not. And lastly, if you're a new watcher here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification. We make tons of videos here at Switch Watch, some of which we're sure that you're gonna enjoy. In fact, I'll put some up now. You can check out our weekly bargains video where we let you know the best games for the best price that week. That goes live every Sunday. And on Monday, Jordan lets us know which great physicals are coming out on the Nintendo Switch. Take care and stay safe, everyone. Juan Romero here, and I'll see you again on the next one.